Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. And apologies, this is going to be a little bit briefer today, as this is the second time I had to record this, as Descript lost the first file and I've been trying to recover it. We have a couple of interesting stories, though, kicking off with DeepSeek not slowing down at all. In fact, they appear to be staffing up for an AGI push. The Chinese lab that has everyone's head in a tizzy has posted half a dozen jobs focused on developing AGI or artificial general intelligence. They're looking for data experts, deep learning researchers, and a legal chief with that legal role focused on developing a risk governance framework for AGI, as well as leading communications with government agencies and regulators. As Bloomberg puts it, the postings offer a glimpse into DeepSeek's ambition to remain at the forefront of Chinese AI. However, it also feels like this is an attempt to move beyond just doing a cheaper, faster version of the same thing that we have over here. In other words, up until now, DeepSeek has been innovative in their approach to model training and distillation, but they haven't produced anything that pushes beyond leading U.S. models in performance. These job postings seem to indicate that that is where they want to head, which makes total sense given the success they've had so far. Meanwhile, OpenAI has been assisting the U.S. government with their probe of DeepSeek. There's been a lot of reporting and speculation around whether DeepSeek inappropriately, or at least unauthorizedly, used OpenAI's models to train their own. Chris Lehane, OpenAI's chief global affairs officer, told Bloomberg TV, we've seen some evidence and we're continuing to review. As DeepSeek was getting all of that press and attention, security researchers from Microsoft started to notify their partners at OpenAI that, quote, groups linked to DeepSeek were exfiltrating large amounts of data using OpenAI's API. OpenAI also said in January that it was, quote, aware of and reviewing indications that DeepSeek had trained its model on the output of OpenAI's proprietary systems through a method called distillation, which uses reasoning outputs from a model like O1 to transpose the capability into another model. Now, one of the things that Chris Lehane, as their global affairs officer, has had to deal with was criticism that OpenAI is being hypocritical, given that they're currently defending multiple active copyright lawsuits related to their collection of training data. However, Lehane tried to explain the difference. He gave the analogy, if you go to the library and read from a book and learn from that book, that's totally fine. That happens all the time in the AI space. There's another version where you take the book, put your name on the book, slap a cover on the book, and hand it out as if it's your book. That's the replication. That's what we're concerned about and have seen some evidence of. Indeed, not to get too wonky or to get into the copyright issues, but effectively that is what they have to prove, that the outputs of OpenAI are the effective equivalent of taking the book, putting their name on it, slapping a new cover on it, and handing it out as if it's their own, to the financial detriment of the original copyright holders. Anyways, the point is that DeepSeek continues to be a hot and going concern, both from a performance as well as from a policy standpoint. Another OpenAI story, the company is apparently getting close to manufacturing their own AI chip. According to Reuters, they're finalizing the chip design over the next few months and preparing to send it for fabrication to TSMC. It will take around six months from that date to produce the first test run of chips, which would put OpenAI on schedule to begin larger production in 2026 if there are no major issues. That is a pretty rapid development cycle for a first chip design, which is a process that usually has taken years. Early reports only surfaced in October that this was something OpenAI was pursuing. And basically they're going for this for the same reason that all the big companies are, which is trying to get off over reliance on NVIDIA. They currently are working with Broadcom on the design, and they also hired former Google TPU engineer Richard Ho to lead an internal team of around 40 people. OpenAI is planning to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on this, which sounds like a lot, but then again, is kind of incidental when you consider the $500 billion Stargate infrastructure project that they are also leading. The AI Action Summit has begun in Paris with world leaders and AI CEOs gathering in the French capital, and the conference is being used as a way to reset the EU stance on AI in recognition that they're falling behind compared to the US and China. There is already quite a bit of controversy, a pretty blaring speech from J.D. Vance this morning. Basically, we are going to have a lot more to talk about here in the days to come, but just flagging that that's going on, and it shows a pretty interesting look at the geopolitics of AI at the moment. Lastly today, an update in our Super Bowl coverage. We spent a bunch of time on Monday looking at the ads that related to AI products that were premiered on Sunday, but one company that might have won the Super Bowl without even running an ad was Perplexity. They took another tried-and-true strategy of Super Bowl advertising, which is to convert your money that you would have spent on an ad spot into a big old contest that distributes that money directly to people instead. On Sunday, CEO Aravind Srinivas tweeted, There will be no perplexity Super Bowl ad. Instead, there's a Super Bowl contest. You install the app and ask at least five questions during the game, and we'll pick one winner to give a million dollars. Ask like a millionaire. According to data analytics platform App Figures, this promotion led to a 50% increase in daily app downloads. Perplexity rose from 257 to 49 in App Store rankings. And for all the people clamoring for the AI ads to show use cases, Perplexity's approach actually fulfilled that brief. 
By asking people to download the app and ask questions, it guided users to familiarize themselves with how it works. And of course, with the game, there was no shortage of sports facts to ask, so a pretty good context for this. So kudos to Perplexity for a well-executed campaign. That's going to do it, however, for the headlines. Next up, the main episode.